Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, with a question for you. Do you paracord? Well, today I'm going to show you how to store all your paracord paraphernalia so it doesn't get all tangled up and you don't get the kinks and the skeins of paracord. And uh, you could be making bracelets and lanyards and all sorts of stuff until your heart's content. So here I have my paracord storage that I just um, made today. And what I used, if you can't tell, is a big container of... Um, it's uh, at Halloween time. I bought some of those little bags of pretzels to give out to trick or treaters, and they came in this big container by Utz. And also, cheese balls come into the come in these containers all year round. So you know, you get your cheesy poofs, and then you can you know wash it out, and make a paracord <laughs> container. Um, so what I have here is uh, um, I punched some holes in the lid and um, I could feed my paracord out. Now you can't put the paracord in just in their hanks or they're going to um, tangle up. So what I've done is rolled them into center pull balls just like I do for my yarn and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So let's push that out of the way. And this is how paracord comes if you buy it from the mi uh, military supply shop. It's about seven bucks for a hundred feet of parachute cord uh, versus, you know, 15 feet for, I don't know, five bucks at the craft store or whatever it is. It's a lot more money at the craft store. And um, so it's kind of in a, in a big hank like that. And, you know, you may successfully be able to work from your hank and not have it tangled up. However, if there are children involved in your paracord projects, expect some tangles. So what I usually do is actually drop it on the floor, usually, so I can kind of de-kink it. But um, I just want—I'm going to show you this technique really quick to make a center pull board. Uh, center pull ball for your cord. I haven't been talking very much today, so my, my voice is, uh, <laughs> is unprepared. Um, what you want to do is just kind of wrap the cord in a figure eight around your fingers a bunch of times, just around your um, thumb and first finger. And this is going to give us um, the center of our center pull ball. It's going to make it so the uh, cord can come out freely. All right, when you filled up your, your fingers like that, what you want to do is kind of pull it off and keep it secure in a little wad of, um, of cord there. And then you're going to start wrapping around. And your cord might king up on you. If that happens, just kind of drop the bundle of it to the floor and um, just kind of let it wiggle around and uh, de-kink. So you're going to wrap this around and around and around. I have a, a, I only have one paracord project on my YouTube channel. It's on how to make a monkey fist knot key ring. And um, that's kind of fun. So you can see it just kind of, this one's actually not so bad. Some of the, um, the cords are really kinky. Some are pretty supple. This happens to be a pretty decent one. The more natural colors seem to be a little bit easier to work with, I've noticed. It's like your neon pink and your bright yellow that are a little bit stiffer. All right. And you're going to keep on wrapping until you've used up all this cord. I'm going to pause the video and come back when this is all balled up. When you get to the end, I try to do a couple wraps around that are kind of right on top of each other. So you get kind of like a nice big bundle and then I kind of pinch that together. And then what I'm going to do is wrap this tail around a couple times and that's really going to secure it because you don't want the tail to come loose and get um, tangled up with the center pole end of your ball of paracord. You can do the same thing for yarn. If you have some yarn you need to corral, um, this is a great way and you can actually knit right from the, from the um, bucket if you store your yarn that way. But I got so tired. I, I have one ball of paracord. This ball, the little multicolor one on the bottom, that's mine. The other, is my the others is my husband's and I asked if he minded if I just kind of store that paracord because it was driving me nuts and he thought my center pole ball was just fantastic so um that's what I did so I can feed that right out just like that and it's not gonna affect the rest of this so to put it in my jug here I'm gonna just lift the lid and plop it down in and you can pack them in there pretty tight as long as the uh you've got the cord facing up and then I'm gonna take the end and feed it through the hole I punched in the top. I used a heavy duty scrapbooking hole punch called the Cropodile. I use this guy right here to punch my hole. But you know, you could use an anywhere hole punch or whatever you have. You could even like wood burn a hole in the top. It doesn't matter as long as you can get that, um, get the cord through. You want to make sure it's not going to snag your cord though. So I wouldn't just like cut an X. Just make sure that whatever hole you make, it's not going to like chafe the cord because you don't want that to get all frayed because then it wouldn't look very good for your projects. All right. So then to add on to this, I decided I would, um, tie a, I had a scrap, little small scrap ball of cord, just this little bit here. Somebody must've been using that to practice. Um, 
and I have a lot of scouts in my house. So what I did was I just tied a knot, you can see it in there in the uh, bucket there, see that little knot there bobbing around. I uh, tied a knot in the end of this little scrap piece and um, tie, then fed it through the little hole here and then tied another end to a pair of scissors. They're safety scissors, I sharpened them, they'll cut the cord, they're not the best, but you know, it's fine, you need something to cut your cord with. And um, then also, when I was at Knitting Group last night, which was totally fun by the way, I had people at my knitting group, I was so happy, um, I noticed on this package of Lion Brand yarn, there was actually a ruler printed on the inside of the ball and on the outside of the ball. I was just completely psyched, and my friend Kathy said, you know, you ought to put a ruler on your paracord storage so that you can have it measured out, you can measure it out when you need it. And I'm like, that's just great, because you could go to the container, measure out your stuff, and um, and then use it. So I have some accessories. These are some of the bracelets my husband made, little paracord bracelets. Aren't they cool? I think they're awesome. Um, so he also picked up some buckles and whatnot um, when he was in his paracord phase, and he got some black ones and some colored ones, and what I'm going to do is plop them right here in the bucket so they don't get lost. So again, it's so easy to get in and out of the bucket. And I feel like I should buy some more so I can fill it up because I can always just punch more holes in the top. So what I'm going to do is just put, put these guys right in here. Now the other thing I want handy, I'm just going to put those bracelets in there because I don't know what else to do with them. Um, it's not going to affect how the how the string pulls out. Now the only other thing I want to have handy but I want to have on the outside of the box is this lighter. So I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with that. Uh, maybe I could weave a little pouch or something out of paracord or something, or maybe just tape it to the top or whatnot. But um, let me just uh, move the camera so I can show you this. Um, just kind of sitting upright because it's kind of a weird angle. Hang on one second. And there is the pretzel jug turned paracord storage solution. You can see I got my scissors right here. I can just pull and the paracord comes out easily. I'm gonna have to shove that back in, but you know, I could feed it all out like that. I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do with the lighter. I'll probably tape it to the underside of the lid. I just, you know, I want it accessible to grown-ups. I don't want it accessible to kids, so, you know, I might just keep it in the junk drawer. I'm not sure. But there you go. That's how you can store your paracord without it being a problem. Nobody wants a paracord problem with a paracord paraphernalia. Now do we? All right, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting. Thank <laughs> you.